Well, hey, Rob. What's up, Bob? What's going on? Another uh, another podcast here today, another Connect for Insurance podcast powered by Pinnacle Financial Services. Uh, looking forward to another uh, great episode here. We're just rolling along now. Uh, got to crank four. them out. Is it episode four? That's yeah. it's nice. Very nice. Yeah. So today we, man, what a topic today. So five years ago, being in the Medicare Advantage space, it used to be around June, July, we'd say, okay, Medicare season's going to start, right? We started getting information from the carriers, um, certification information started coming out. It's 12 months out of the year. Something's going on with uh, Medicare Advantage uh, these days. And uh, we're going to talk about today's a pretty big one. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, a little, we're going to focus on bad and ugly, <laughs> I think, more, more today for sure. Yeah, I don't think there's much good in what oh, we're going to Oh my goodness, yeah. So, so a little background, um, CMS. Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the governing body, as you would, for uh, for the Medicare space. Uh, very important when it comes to Medicare Advantage. Uh, you may be familiar, Rob, with AHIP. Um, a little too familiar, actually. <laughs> right? So AHIP is that national training all the agents have to do every single year, making sure that they're ready to go when it comes to selling Medicare, and it is required by... CMS. Mm. Our friends at at uh, CMS are the ones that dictate the training for the agents have to be done every single year. So agents are familiar with CMS. They're familiar with the regulations. If you're selling Medicare, you've been doing this a long time. Um, I know you are probably already gearing up being our national agent I'm, trainer. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, you know, eat my Wheaties and just trying to prepare because this is kind of the calm before the storm, right? But um, I don't think I don't know if they're going to change much this year. You know, I mean, in past years, uh, for those of you that are new to the Medicare space or you're thinking about it, uh, AHIP is a five module piece. Then there's a 50 question test. Um, if you're new, you have to take all five modules. Uh, if you're returning, you can skip modules one, two, and three. Except they're still going to ask you the questions from one, two, and three. So I personally, I just do it every year. I just do one through five just to make sure that they're not throwing any curveballs in there. Sure. Um, but the crazy part is, is the test, it's 50 questions. They require a 90%. <laughs> right. You could only get five wrong. I mean, to get my license, I could get a 70, which I got a 70 on the dot, by the way. So <laughs> it's like, Many years ago, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's crazy to think that you know, from a, a governing body perspective, CMS wants you to be almost perfect. Yeah. You know, yeah. A. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, they they require it every year. The agents, I, I know, have a difficult time um, with not only taking the actual testing, but I know that even the technology, a lot of times it gets changed up. The agents have a difficulty logging into the system. How do you report it to the carriers? There's always some glitches when it comes to technology as well. Hopefully this year, we're not going to have those issues. And I think we've started seeing some of the information coming out already from the carriers. Yeah. So, so it looks like right now, uh, AHIP is slated for June 20th, at least. Okay. Uh, Aetna is June 29th. Now, one thing we didn't mention. So our last episode, we talked a little bit about, uh, Nahu and uh, well, I think, feel like we bring them up every time. Sure. Um, they also have a test and that is true. training that you can do that, that kind of, uh, competes with AHIP. Uh, the problem last year is they didn't have what two of the main carriers. I mean, yeah, so yeah. United and right. They were they were a little bit limited. So if you were selling some of those bigger carriers, it was difficult because you would have had to have done both AIP and and the Nahu. Um, so hopefully this year they'll have everything um, under their certification. Yeah, we have no news yet. Yeah, um, but I can tell you, um, you know, the cool thing about their training over AHIP was that they allowed you to have a twelve month kind of um, training log that they were going to keep putting new training in there for you to right. be able to kind of go back to. So you're not just paying for a kind of a one and done because with AHIP, you're not going back. Right. You know, you download the the stuff and, and you can review it. But with them, they were trying to also have it. So it was like a constant training th session that you could take advantage of. And it was cheaper. It was like 95 bucks right. uh, compared to the 175, 125, uh, the carrier, carrier discount. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about NAHU today, the National Association of Health Underwriters. Um, we're going to give them a little bit of a plug today because they're 
intricate when it comes to going to um, battle for agents. I mean, really, that's their their function in many ways. Now, myself, I'm part of the NAHU uh, FMO Medicare Council, which really means I'm part of this group of individuals that looks at all of the stuff coming down the road from CMS, all of their projected um, new regulations. And typically we get an opportunity being part of NAHU to give feedback. You know, this makes sense or it doesn't make sense. And it, this is why it doesn't make sense. Um, if you do this, you're going to shut down the whole Medicare world. So you really don't want to do that. Uh, so we get our opportunity there. And NAHU is really the voice for agents uh, across the country. So there's local ones, state ones, um, that it's really important important to be part of um, if you're not already. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about why NAHU is so important today. Um, you've gone to a lot of their meetings. I know um, you see the kind of uh, stuff that they put forward. And, and now with this training, it's really important to be uh, part of it for, as an agent. Yeah. I mean, they're um, kind of like our, um, our lobbyists for us as well, right? right. So um, any input that we give them, uh, whether it's, you know, us as an FMO or our agents, it's, it's going to the regulators right now, you know, uh, what, what's the famous saying that you always say? Yeah. When the, when I make a joke, it's a joke. And when the government makes a joke, it's the law. <laughs> We're going to steal that. We saw that from Will Rogers and, and when it comes to uh, some of the stuff we see, I, I think it, it's a lot truer than we would like many times. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's, I, it's crazy because I feel like sometimes they don't really see what agents are actually doing. And I need, I feel like sometimes they need to justify the rules that they're putting in place. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is kind of right. fits within that. Yeah. That yeah. So, so in starting the conversation, we want to back up just a little bit pre AEP. So October 8th, we're all geared up. October 15th, we're going to get ready. Our agents are geared up. They've done marketing already. They've got their existing clients. They've studied all their plans. They've done all their training, obviously, um, by that point. And we get this little memo from CMS that says, oh, by the way, um, we have this uh, new regulation that all of you are going to have to start following immediately. So in essence, all marketing materials, lead generation programs, any flyers that you're using, uh, we're going to have to have some disclaimers on them. Um, and it was going to pretty much start immediately. And now we have all these agents that are already have done their marketing are ready to go. And they're calling up and it's and it's like, well, what do I do? You know, I've already had mailers ready to go out or have gone out. I've already got responses coming back. Um, and this was really just um, a huge bomb that they dropped on the whole agent force. Uh, there's some reasoning behind why they were looking at the regulations, but I think they definitely missed the mark. Um, and really the big driver of that was the call centers. Um, so what do we know about the call centers, Rob? What's the first thing that comes to mind when it comes to Medicare and call centers? Well, here's the thing, right? <laughs> you get no personal touch and you get all the uh, pizzazz is what I like to call them. So you get your Joe Namaths. Right. You get, uh, what's what's the other J.J. one? J.J. Walker. J. J. Has, Walker. Has, he's, he's been out there. I know mine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Joe Montana is actually out there. I think he was maybe WellCare um, starting to advertise it. So the call centers are getting the overwhelming majority of complaints, the overwhelming majority of rapid disenrollments by, by individuals. So CMS is looking at all these complaints and they're thinking to themselves, okay, how do we, you know, go about regulating, you know, how this marketing is going on? So instead of really just maybe taking a look at what was driving the complaints, um, I think probably they were looking at that, but they didn't target specifically that. They just said, okay, everybody marketing is going to have to follow these new rules. Here's a disclaimer. If a plan... Um, really came down to whether you were marketing or whether it was considered a communication. So marketing versus communication with your advertising. So marketing was just if a plan had anything about premiums, it's a zero premium plan, had anything about benefits, dental, vision, hearing, over the counter, um, or even cost sharing, part B givebacks. They were considered marketing and you had to file it with CMS. Before you could do anything, um, any kind of advertising you were doing that fit into that marketing had to be filed with CMS, 
which when it's October 8th and AEP is a week <laughs> <It's> away. <laughs> always October when they launch this final rule stuff. It's, Unbelievable. It's wild when you think about it. But that one really obviously is directly aimed at the call centers. For exactly. The I mean, because they were the ones going, well, and, you know, it's like, you know, 10 a.m. or 11 p.m. And you're seeing these things with, uh, you know, prominent figures from, you know, sports and TV. And they're saying, hey, you can get free this or you right. know, hey, you can get this benefit. And 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 the other crazy part is in half the time, the people weren't even in a county that had plans that had those offers. Exactly, exactly. And that's where the really all the complaints came in. It was really a, a big switch and bait situation and uh, CMS got involved. We got these regs that came down October 8th. We've sort of gotten our legs under us at this point when it comes to all the marketing materials, how to file everything. You want to make sure that you're doing all the right things when it comes to your advertising. And, I, and I'll just say this right out the, right out the get-go. If you are doing advertising and using third-party vendors, you as an agent, you better make sure that those vendors are actually also filing pieces where they're required to be filed. If they're more generic Medicare, if they're talking more Medicare supplement, they don't have to be filed. That's considered that communication. If they're talking about benefits and premium um, and cost sharing, now you're into, I have to have this filed. So we sort of have our legs under us for that. Well, real quick, right? Why is that so important? Because guess what? The lead vendors aren't liable. You're liable. Right. Even though the lead vendor is the one sending out all the information, it doesn't matter. They have zero liability. It's exactly. It all boils down to the agent. So that's why it's important to make sure they're doing that. Yeah. Never assume. Uh, we always say, if you're not sure, send the pieces in, let the team take a look at it, let compliance take a look at it and get it filed if it needs to get filed. Even if it's from a third party vendor, um, you can get those pieces filed pretty, pretty easily. I can't say it's always a quick turnaround when it comes to government. You know, the oxymoron, government efficiency, it's, it's just the, old, the another joke there. But um, <laughs> so now we're 2022 and um, we got another little bomb that got dropped on us. It was a pretty normal week <laughs> until that bomb. Yeah, so all of a sudden, well, I shouldn't say all of a sudden. So there's there's been some um, additional conversations going on, and, and our friends at, at NAHU um, have been um, commenting on a lot of these proposals that CMS has. But one that came out that is um, specifically pretty daunting that is going to impact all insurance agents selling Medicare is the new rule that is proposed to go into effect January 2023 that says you as an insurance agent talking to a client over the phone have to record the entire conversation, including the enrollment process, everything. So first off, you're looking at that and you're thinking to yourself, okay, where's all this technology coming? The agents most of the time aren't even going to have this cumbersome technology. Oh, by the way, the call centers that have been creating all these issues They've already been recording their stuff already, so it really doesn't impact. It doesn't impact them where all the complaints are really coming from, for the most part. So really, it was just again catch all. They're just through the regulation at everybody. Uh, it's it's in the final document. It hasn't been a hundred percent enacted yet. Uh, but that's not to say that this isn't going to happen here pretty soon. So agents are going to have to figure out how to record their calls, the entire call that is. And by the way, in the first minute, and this is just crazy, in the first minute, a disclaimer on the phone has to be read. And I'll, I'll paraphrase it here a little bit. Um, I wrote it down because I wanted to make sure I got it right. Uh, we do not offer every plan available in your area. Please contact Medicare.gov or 1-800-MEDICARE to get information on all of your options. So here, let me play devil's advocate. I'm an agent who's working a, a client lead. I get on the phone and I say, Mrs. Jones, hi, this is Bob. And I got the information that you had requested. You want to have a discussion about Medicare. Oh, by the way, just to let you know, I do not offer every Medicare plan in your area. Please contact Medicare.gov or 1-800-MEDICARE to get all the information that, again, I don't have available for you. Now that I got that out of the way, Let how about we set up? How about we set up an appointment so I can help you? Right. That's so crazy. it's it's a crazy thing that is out there. Um, 
and people probably think we're kidding when they hear us saying this, but it, it's it's really one of those Legit. situations where if this goes through as is, this is going to impact all insurance agents selling Medicare. I bet you 10 bucks that either one or two things are going to happen. Um, Best Buys are going to sell out of tape recorders really quick if they still even <laughs> exist. Or the App Store on Google and uh, Apple Play are going to be crazy for for recorders. Yeah. Because you, not to mention, and I'm sure you're going to get into this, you got to keep the, the voice recording like a scope for 10 years. Exactly. Exactly. So this, you have to have the technology set up. So Let's say this goes through. Now, I envision that the insurance carriers are going to have some guidance that they're going to put out on this. Um, I expect that there's going to be a lot from some of the um, technology companies out there that are already working in the space that they're going to look to um, have a solution for agents because it's a huge opportunity for some of them also to have some additional stuff on their uh, platforms. That doesn't mean it's going to be any easier for the insurance agents who are selling this and having to not only record the entire call, but say that disclaimer on every call in the first minute. It's yeah. it's unbelievable. I mean, that's basically like you going to somebody saying, hey, just so you know, I'm not your best option, but I'm in front <laughs> of you. Let's let's make a deal here. Which right. Is, I mean uh, – Blows my mind. Yeah. Where, where's the bomb drop uh, sound? We're going to have to have them add that in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is where we are today. We don't know if the final ruling is going to come out the way it is. Uh, I think everybody is still getting their legs under them a little bit when it comes to the carriers uh, and the different technology companies to see exactly where this is going to fall is and what's going to be needed. I wouldn't be shocked that some sort of rule is going to come out. Is it going to be exactly the way it is today? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know the CMS is going to just make a decision after they went through all the comment se sections and everything they've gone through at this point, and it's still in there that they're going to just 86 it. Um, I'd be surprised if they did. Yeah. Uh, let's hope that at the very least there's some consideration being given to what, what they're actually asking for an individual to do. Um, it's, it could be a big problem. Uh, I guess the good news is, is that it's early enough that we can maybe have some solutions for that. It's not October 8th, like all the print ads <laughs> last time. You know, they rolled this out on October, October 8th. We probably just shut down AEP because we wouldn't know how to how to deal with it. But uh, it, it's going to be something uh, that's going to have to be addressed here over the next couple of months. Yeah. I mean, hey, look, if you got to record the calls, you got to record the calls. I don't think there's an issue with that. But the disclaimer... I mean, within the first minute, maybe maybe at the end of the conversation and you say it, you know, a little bit more like that. That doesn't sound friendly to me. Right. You know? I mean, it's very <laughs> abrasive. I mean, maybe at the end of the conversation, you're saying, hey, just so you know, there is going to be some local plans or, or plans that, that are in the area that I am I don't work with. If you want some more information, you can go on Medicare.gov or we can also still discuss that. I mean, uh, you know, as an insurance agent myself, uh, you're an insurance agent as well. Right. I always look at all the options, even if I'm not with that company, because sure. you got to know that you're putting your client who's somebody's mom, somebody's grandma or somebody's granddad on the correct plan, whether that's with you or not, because someone's yeah. going to come in and, and do that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's it's something that, uh, listen, if it happens, we're insurance agents. We've been doing this a long time. We've rolled with the punches many times over the years. There's, there's always changes in uh, the way we have to do things and regulations and new CE credits and new trainings and new stipulations that, that come out. Um, you know, and this could just be another hurdle we have to overcome, but but I'm sure we will. Uh, when there's a will, there's a, there's a way, and and I'm sure that that we'll figure it out. Uh, but it's not it's not something that makes any sense. What, to, what, what's the saying about insurance agents? <laughs> if uh, if there was a, a nuclear blast, the two things that would survive would be cockroaches and sales agents because they'd find a way. They find survive. a way to figure it out, man. They, I mean, they we do. got through COVID, right? Yeah, we we got through everything. COVID was some of the best. Best years we had. Insurance agents figured out a lot of new ways of selling uh, the technology, the uh, the online enrollment platforms. Got very you know, creative. they yeah. You listen. You have to you have to adapt and overcome. And uh, insurance agents certainly have done that many times over over their uh, over their lifetime. Uh, we may have to do a little bit of that uh, here again today, which. 
I would rather not have to, but it, it may be something that, that's out of our control a little bit. Um, so we'll have more to come, I'm sure, Rob, on this oh, yeah. as as we get more details. Um, I know we're, um, as an organization, we're going to hold some trainings on some of the technology that's out there right now uh, just to try and get ourselves prepared as much as possible, uh, start getting the word out, start talking to individuals about what might be coming uh, down the road. And then if we got to deal with it, um, we'll deal with it, and then I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. So... Uh, something that's yet to be seen. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of wild to think that a lot of the, the voice stuff we were excited about, right. You know, they're rolling out voice signatures with right. a lot of the new, the platforms and things like that. But little did we know just how important, you know, the recording and the voice signatures are really going to be, it's, yeah. you know, yeah, exactly. I love technology. Exactly. Yeah. And remember, you might think to yourself, well, how is CMS going to regulate this? How are they going to know that everybody's doing these voice signatures? I will tell you that they don't have to. What's going to happen is if you have a complaint, then they're going to ask you for your documentation, for your for your recording. That's when it's going to, going to become an issue. They're not going to just say, hey, Rob Valencia, send me all your recordings one day, right? That, that's probably not going to be the way it goes down. But if somebody has a complaint against you and they want to get that information, they're going to ask you for it. That's when you're going to have to be able to say, okay, here's my recording. Here's my, um, here's the application and the enrollment information. And here's the lead generation method, how I got in touch with the client, you know, whatever, whatever it may be that, that was um, creating the issue. Uh, so that's where it's going to come into play. And uh, again, all we can hope for is that when we have organizations like Nahu that are fighting the good fight when it comes to this, we're still putting out um, you know additional comments, and we hope that we can have the uh, powers that be at the uh, government at CMS to maybe see the light a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I I have faith in Nahu. <laughs> yeah, faith. I, I have faith. <laughs> and if you're not part of Nahu, you join Nahu, right? You want to have your voice out there. It's important, right? To kind of have to the ability to stop some of this stuff before it even happens. Yeah, you know, um, they have a lot of really great local events. They have national events that, you know, if you're a member, you get invited to. You meet sure. a lot of um, local agents. Uh, you meet a lot of, um, you know, local politicians and people that are doing whatever they can to make it a, a, a good world, um, whether it be, you know, the small town or the big city for both insurance agents and the people you're helping. So yeah. uh, it's a great organization. I actually uh, was looking into to doing it myself because I know Pinnacle, we're a part of Nahu. Right. Um, but I think I myself would love to get plugged yeah. in. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, any, any questions you want to reach out to, uh, reach out to your marketer, reach out to your team, um, get as much information as you can. Not that there's a ton more information out there right now, but, but I'm sure you just want to be tied in to, um, to know what happens and what you're going to be required to do. So, uh, it's important to make sure that you're on top of all this information. So with that being said, man, I, I, you know, I don't want to say we're depressed, but we, we got to get the word out. We got to make sure everybody knows that they're doing the right stuff. Um, but I think we're good for today. If uh, anybody has any questions, again, reach out to your team and make sure that you get um, up to speed on everything coming out there. And uh, we should be good to go. So hey, if you, you were your partner, you, you got partners here, we'll get through it together. Yeah, that's all exactly. That matters, right? Exactly. That's right. Always be learning. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, awesome. everybody. Thanks again. Have thanks. a great rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed our uh, podcast episode four Number today. Four in the Con books. Connect for insurance. Find us on all the major uh, podcast accounts. So we're Spotify. Uh, name them all off for me. Which which other ones are we on? All Apple, uh, Pandora. Uh, I mean, you name it, we're right. on it. And you can just go to connect the number four insurance.com and you can find us there as well. So absolutely. All right. For Rob, I'm Bob. I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll talk soon. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks guys. <laughs>